you can be extremely ambitious and, and that's amazing uh, but you also have to make sure that you're coming from a good place that you're coming from a place where you you can feel fine with yourself you can sit in a room and be happy just to be yourself uh, or else it's going to be like poison It took like a month for us to build a system, but it took me like 10 years to get to a point where I was able to do that. Because I've always wanted to leverage, I've always wanted to do something that's extremely scalable. And, uh, and suddenly we had this system, and we have it now, that's literally the most scalable automated marketing system on the planet. We actually created an automatic process where we work with a company, we help them identify the exact target the targets that they're looking for. So it could be any industry, any location, any company size. The system finds them automatically. Uh, with our system, you're not competing with anybody, and it's infinitely scalable. So what that means is we can just as easily send uh, 1,500 emails a day, which is our most basic package, as we can send 15,000 emails a day. So, and when you scale with us, like let's say you wanna get 10 times more emails, you're gonna get 10 times more results. What's going on guys, it's Lidor Dayan here with another episode of the Mind Body Podcast and with me, a good friend of mine, Robbie Frank. Robbie, good to see you my friend, good after a while, you. huh? How, how many years? Three and a half years. Three and a half years, yeah, it's been a while. So, uh, uh, I would like you to, to tell a little bit about yourself, um, uh, what do you do and, uh, and from there we will go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm, the, I'm currently the co-owner of a company called Primatica, and we've built the most efficient, most successful marketing automation software in the world for businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a long history uh, as an entrepreneur, I think around like uh, 10 years from now, I've been an entrepreneur. I uh, went through a lot of ups and downs, really crazy stories. Uh, we can talk about that if you want, so we can talk about the company. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've known each other for like uh, three and a half years. We met, um, I think I think you wanted to really expand your online yeah. uh, presence at the time. Yeah. And it seems you did a pretty good job. Thank that. you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, before we, we start to talk about uh, your current project, uh, I want you to talk a little bit about yourself. What got you to, to become an entrepreneur from the beginning? I, I had a girlfriend. Um, that I was obsessed with and uh, and she left me and she cheated on me uh, it was a very sad story yeah. uh, and I can and I and I was obs I was obsessed about her I really really wanted her and uh, one of the things one of the reasons we ended up breaking up was because she wanted to travel to South America and I didn't have the money to do that so I convinced myself from a place of pain mm -hmm. that you know if I just had a lot more money uh, then this wouldn't have happened and I did that on purpose um, so so I kind of convinced myself that if I make a lot of money and become really successful then I can it, it's like it would be like redemption it's like it's gonna fix it so it's kind of a funny way but but that's like what got me started that got me like really obsessed like I, cha I just changed my obsession from that woman that I loved to to business um, and obviously that really changed over the years because it wasn't healthy uh, but that's I guess that's what got me started so uh, I remember you when, when you when we met you were in in Arcelia it was yeah yeah and you were really into it and you started to to really start your business here and I saw like this fire in your eyes that you were like super like intent and you you knew exactly what you wanted um, so what did you learn from that experience back then so so um, for me like back then I was all about like the 10x rule and and, yeah. and I had no I, I had no fear like I took a lot of risks and I every time that. I took a risk it worked and uh, I didn't. I, I came from a place of pain. I came from a place of like we really wanted to make it work now, no matter what. And um, I knew that I didn't have the motivation to make it work. So what I did was I put myself in situations that forced me to to do it. So for example, I met like a mentor from Europe, a guy that 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 considered himself like as a very successful online marketer at the time. And uh, I, I literally moved from my parents' house to uh, five hundred dollars a day or like $300 a day hotel in Israel. Uh, as a guy who doesn't have money, I just took a loan to do it. 
because I knew I have like two weeks to make it work or I'm gonna like like just be in a pit of money um, and that worked that actually worked because like I, I woke up with anxiety every day it was terrible uh, it was super super stressful but it worked in the sense that it made me like jump forward uh, really really fast so I said okay if it worked now let's do it again and then let's do it again and every time I took like bigger and bigger risks until when you met me I jumped from like uh, having somebody work for me to like let's say let's hire 10 people and let's move to a $10,000 a month uh, place and and just like took a leap and that obviously that didn't end well like that ended very very badly mm -hmm. um, but but that's kind of like the, the the period of time like that that's where I was internally and what what it taught me was that you can be extremely ambitious and, and that's amazing uh, but you also have to make sure that you're coming from a good place that you're coming from a place where you you can feel fine with yourself you can sit in a room and be happy just to be yourself uh, or else it's gonna be like poison and and you're just gonna it's gonna become compulsive and and you're just gonna like like make it really uh, you're just gonna poison your actions and, uh, and then, so that's what happened so so in essence like the the fact that it, it was successful and they got more and more successful and then it failed big time that put me in like a, a two-year depression almost where I had to like really like build up my foundations back back again uh, but this time like do it from a place of like I feel good about myself like I love who I am I love the experience of being me uh, but but I'm also doing it you know just as an expression I'm doing it like not from a place of pain but from a place of like really enjoying uh, what I do or trying to enjoy it as much as possible so we all will in some point in our life get to a rock bottom we can call it like that so what do you see that really help you to follow through and actually build rebuild yourself up there uh, especially mentally because uh, I can tell for myself I, I saw this like big vision of uh, going to America conquer America and it didn't really end up the way I wanted it yeah. So, uh, what you see helped you to overcome these inner thoughts, negative <coughs> thoughts, and to start building yourself? Yeah, so for me it was very different than like the average story. Uh, what happened was I just spent like a whole year uh, depressed, I moved back to my parents' house. Uh, I would uh, go to sleep at 5 a.m., I would wake up at like 4 p.m., my mother would be at work. I would go to the gym, I would literally stay at the gym from like 5 p.m. till 10, 11 p.m because I didn't want anybody in my family to see me uh, and I was like in that loop for a long time and just hating myself and I would get calls from people that I owe money to and it would be like super stressful and I was not willing to get a job or you know to do anything uh, because uh, I was in debt uh, but I just thought like no I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur I'm not gonna you know get a job or anything I'm gonna solve it this way um, and really it was like very tight very bad bad energy just it was like hell for like a long time and um, and and also like it was even worse because I had I was very not very but I was I was relatively famous in Israel so people would recognize me on the street mm -hmm. and and that even brought a lot of shame so I really hated myself um, so what what really made the change was uh, it, I, I had to do a lot of inner work to kind of accept that that this is just where I am right now and that's okay and and I actually through a very long process of like accepting not accepting that like this was my situation and I'm gonna be stuck here but like accepting like this is what it is right now it's just the reality at this moment and not fighting it all the time uh, that like relaxing uh, helped me like I started feeling good uh, just you know taking a walk and not doing anything or just like like looking at a beautiful view um, and and like that kind of brought the openness for new things to come in because I was not like holding tight all the time to like oh I had this identity, I was big b back in the day, I was really successful and I have to get back, like, it was not compulsive. And then just things started really ch like changing on their own, like suddenly I met this uh, really cute girl who ended up becoming my wife and we're, we have like a kid now and so, so she gave me a lot of motivation because I just, I, I didn't want to do it for me, like I, I had no motivation to do it for myself at all. Like I could have just not worked for years and I wouldn't have mind because I was just I became very peaceful and it didn't have any more motivation to be successful uh, but then you know if you need motivation to be successful just find a good woman and mm -hmm. and uh, and she pushed me like like Ravi I love you I want to be with you but you have to start making money like I want to have kids I want to have a family I can't have that if you just 
don't do anything all day. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a long process. Like I literally started out by getting a job, uh, built up my confidence a bit, started like a small thing in business, uh, tried it, you know, it worked, and then it didn't, and then tried another thing, and, and like kind of like built my confidence. So it took, it took like two, two and a half years to rebuild that confidence again. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, but now it's like rock solid because now it's like I've been through that, so so I know I know like I can come back from it. And but yeah, it was it was two and a half years of like 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 almost like somebody who had a car crash, and it takes them two and a half years of like physiotherapy to get back to where they were. But now it's like a much more solid foundation. Now if something like this happens again, they have such a strong body that like and such a good mind that like they're gonna be able to come out of almost anything. That's amazing, man. And tell me a little bit about your new project right now and where did this start on this process when you start to rebuild your confidence and everything? Yeah, so, so I've done a few businesses, businesses since then, but it was always the same problem. So always it, it came back to like trying really hard and putting in a, like coming from a place of like really trying and, and effort and, and I would, I would try to I would spend days just thinking of like, how can I make money? What's the business idea that's going to make me money? What's the strategy? And it was very much mind-based and I didn't feel good. I just felt bad. I was like, oh, I want to make money. I want to be successful. How do I get it done again? And and nothing came up. And anything that I tried, it like came from ego. It was very like, I want it. I want it. And it didn't work. And what really changed it, surprisingly, was that I started meditating for like an hour a day. And it, it might sound silly, but... The fact that I started meditating gave me the ability to not think so much, to just stop thinking and just be feel really good and be able to calm my mind down and just be quiet. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I was able to calm it down, suddenly I had creativity again. Like creativity comes back when you can stop thinking mm -hmm. all the time and you can actually feel good in your body. So, so suddenly like things just started happening on their own. Um, and I started doing uh, uh, something I wanted to do for a long time, which was like a cold email uh, strategy to close businesses online. And then I said, okay, uh, you know, I just learned how to program in Python. So I have like 10 years of experience in marketing and then I learned how to program as well. So I said, what if I take like some part of what I'm doing and make it automatic? And I, I kind of programmed the thing in Python, a uh, programming language, and suddenly like part of my, my work became automatic. And then I said, what if I also automate the part where I send emails? And I work coded that. And then that became automatic. And then I thought like, oh, what if I can scale it? And, and so it's just like a very, um, a very like creative process. And it took like a month for us to build a system, but it took me like 10 years to get to a point where I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. Because I've always wanted to leverage. I, I always wanted to do something that's extremely scalable. And, uh, and suddenly we had this system and we have it now that's literally the most scalable automated marketing system on the planet. So. So that was like, I, I can't even say how crazy it is that it happened. And, and I, I found the right partner at the right time. And, and I really think, I really, really think that it happened because I spent like 10 years just rushing after success. And always it seemed to like, like just evade me. Like I almost, always, almost got it. And then I tried holding it too tight and then he ran away and then tried again. But then when I learned how to finally like, like feel really good in myself, uh, inside myself and just be happy and coming from a place of creativity and passion uh, and also the fact that I had a child, a kid born, which gave me the motivation to just work as much as it takes to make it work and, and to really build something where I can have as much time as I want in the day and as much money as I want and not have to you know think about that and just be able to be with my family. Uh, all of those together um, just made it work. So, so it's really like the right place, the right time, the right mindset. Uh, but, but again, I tried like 30 times and every time was like, it was the right time, but it wasn't the right mindset or it wasn't the right uh, business model or it wasn't, I wasn't okay or, or the clients weren't, it, it was always something missing. And, you know, I just kept trying and every time was like a different result, but now it's like click. And, and when you find the right thing at the right time, the right partner, the right mindset, and then it can work. It's funny how uh, law of attraction is really work, huh? It's mm -hmm. like when you really actually want something that's just talking intellectually in your head and you're feeling it in your heart and you're really ready for it, mm -hmm. it starts to come to you. Just like you said, like I had this business partner and everything. 
and uh, yeah. Yeah. and I want to know a little bit more about uh, what's what's the difference between what you're doing right now uh, in terms of marketing than any other platforms because right now a big thing is click funnel if you know so they're very big about marketing and everything so what's unique about what you're doing right now. Sure, so I always loved cold calling. And mm -hmm. the reason I loved cold calling was because you're able to control your numbers. So cold calling was something where I could pick up the phone, I could call somebody, and I knew I had a, like a 5% chance of closing a meeting with that business owner. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool is, you know, if, it's, if you do it to businesses, like business to business, then you can find that person's information online. So you don't need to find their, you don't need to get their information, you can just find it, make a big spreadsheet and start calling businesses that are exactly the businesses that you want because you can choose which industries you wanna work with and you just start making calls, you get good at it. And then suddenly you get, you know, you, you start closing meetings. And so I had experience with that last year. Uh, I started like a web design business I did like 40 cold calls a day, learned from Grant Cardone how to do cold calling, and we closed like $10,000 in deals. I closed like in the first month because I just got good at it. Every day I would close like five or six meetings, and these were really good business owners, had a lot of fun talking to them, and I controlled the process. So that gave me so much confidence, and that was the first time I really felt like, wow, I can control my sales. Like, I don't have to beg anybody. I don't have to pay anyone. I don't have to hope that it works. I just, I know my numbers. I know I pick up this many phone calls. I get this many meetings and I can always increase it if I want. So what we did with this system, unlike any other system in the world, this is a cold outreach system. So first of all, it's not like Facebook or Google in the sense that if somebody has to search you or you're not showing somebody an ad. We're sending with our system direct emails to people. So that you know that doesn't sound special because obviously people send emails all the time to businesses. The average business owner gets like 20 emails a day. So what we did, we actually created an automatic process where we work with a company, we help them identify the exact target that, targets that they're looking for. So it could be any industry, any location, any company size. The system finds them automatically, does it completely on its own. And then we have a team of copywriters that are extremely good at using our system to create personalized email templates where the business owner gets the email and they don't even know that it's not a real person. Like it looks so real because our emails, they don't have links, they're not spammy, they're short, they're very precise. And we have really good strategies to get these people to say, yes, I'm interested. Yes, send me the video. Yes, I want to know more. And what makes our system really special is first of all, it has the same targeting abilities like Facebook or Google. So we can target extremely specifically, like very specific targets. We can test out many different email templates, many different industries at the same time, many locations. So we have an infinite ability to try as many variations as we want to see what works. And our most basic package is 1,500 emails a day. So imagine 1,500 emails a day, going to the exact business owner that you're looking to, to, to talk to and sending them an extremely personalized email where they don't even know that it's not a real person. Mm -hmm. So we're getting amazing results with it. Now, what makes it even better, and that's really what makes the system special, is that when you pay Facebook ads you know, or Google AdWords, $500 a day, and then you wanna scale your, 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 your uh, automation. You wanna you want do it instead of 500 a day, you wanna do 5,000 a day. You don't get 10 times more results for 10 times more money. You get maybe two, three times more results for 10 times more money. Because the more you scale, the worse the campaign gets. And you have to approve, approve it with them. They have to like what you wrote. You have very specific things you can't say. They can shut your account down at any moment. And I've managed, uh, I've managed ad accounts where it was $100,000 a month and they just closed it down. Just, just, they didn't like something, they just closed it down. So you're always at the mercy of Facebook. They can always change it, anything they want. You're competing with everybody else. So the prices just keep going up and up. Uh, with our system, you're not competing with anybody and it's infinitely scalable. So what that means is we can just as easily send uh, 1,500 emails a day, which is our most basic package, as we can send 15,000 emails a day. So, and when you scale with us, like let's say you wanna get 10 times more emails, you're gonna get 10 times more results. So the results, because they're directly to people, they're actually proportional. So if you increase the emails by 10 times, you increase the leads by 10 times. And we actually use the system to promote ourselves. So we don't spend $1 on advertising. We just send out like 3,000 emails per day. We get about five or six super high quality bookings every day. And over the last month alone, we closed multi-million dollar companies. Uh, we closed massive businesses that work with super important people. I'm not sure if I can say the, 
the actual people right now. Um, but but it, we don't need to do anything. Like we, we literally just have the system. It sends out emails. People reply. They get automatically get like a video demo of our system. Or again, when we work with customers, we help them create like their own process that's automatic, and they just get sales calls like every day consistently with like their exact industry, their exact type of business that they want to work with, and it's infinitely scalable. So already we work with multi-million dollar companies that basically said like, okay, give us a week or give us two weeks. We're going to change our infrastructure, and you can start sending us five times as many emails, and they're just going to start getting five times as many leads. So, so there's no such system on the planet. And on average, if you just measure it like cost per lead, business owners pay sometimes like fifty dollars for a click on Google AdWords. You know, uh, so so we actually manage to get about ten times better results on average than Facebook ads or Google ads in terms of cost per lead. Um, and the more somebody scales with us, the cheaper the cost per lead gets because we actually give them a better package at the same time. Do you still think uh, email marketing is something that is still working in the 2020? Just because back sure, then sure. it was like emails or like... So, so email, so that really depends. Like we hire a lot of copywriters to do the copywriting. 99% of copywriters, they do, they do a shit work. Yeah, that's it's true. terrible. Because they write like it's a like you're, they're talking to a brick. Like if they write the right things, click it, do somebody's gonna really buy something, yeah. and it's not. It doesn't work like that. The moment somebody gets an email from you, so first of all, emails still work. Do you get emails? Yes. Do you open them? Not many. Like if I open, I open, and then all right. You just... open or you close, right? Yeah. You either read it or you're like done. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like if you get an email and you immediately notice that it's a real person and it sounds interesting, will you read the email? Probably. Yes. Probably, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, what if the email starts by saying, "Hey, Lidor, I saw that you're a fitness coach in Israel, and I noticed some things in your website." And then it says the address of your website, and then it has so a picture. Very of your, pers extremely personal. Yeah, okay. Like somebody took the time to write a very specific email to you and talk about something that's interesting to you. Like I noticed there's an error on your website. Here's the picture. Uh, I'd like to send you a two minute video to explain what the error is. Are you the, can I send you the video? Sure. Click lead. Okay. Just as an example. Uh, so people uh, have always read emails. They're always going to read emails. Does email marketing work? Like, can you just send somebody an email and be like, you know, try to persuade them on the email? No. But can you send a very personalized email, a short email to a business owner that says, hey, I noticed you're, you're in this industry, you know, I've got something that's especially for you, I, I want to send you like a two minute video to show you that, and it's interesting, it's new, it's personalized, it's fresh, it's short, you're going to say yes, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm interested, you know, so of course that, that has always worked, uh, because, because again, it's human, human communication always worked and always will work. Uh, maybe the marketing tricks wouldn't work. Like back in the day, you could just write a sales page, get somebody to it, and they'll buy. Mm -hmm. Now it won't work because we're moving towards human communication. So it has to be personal. So what our system does, it makes it so personal that it would be very hard for you to know that it's not somebody who actually sat down and wrote the email. And so also uh, you make sure that it's not going to a spam, right? Yes, our emails have an almost 100% deliverability. They almost always reach the inbox. And the reason for that is because, first of all, they don't have any links. Second of all, each email is 100% unique. Not only do we personalize the emails, but we actually take like small words. Like, let's say, I found your website. We're going to say that in like 10 different ways. We're going to say, I found your website. I landed on your website. I clicked on your website. I found your site. I saw your site. I searched for your site. Like, we're going to say the same phrases in the email in like 10 different ways. And so there's like like a hundred thousand combinations for the words that an email can have because it's like 10 different things that we change for like 10 different options so it's like a hundred thousand options um, so that's number two so again number one because uh, uh, there's no links so Google trust us number two we work with uh, really high quality Google resellers so the, the accounts that we buy for our customers are from vendors that Google trusts for that we buy the G suits for our customers Thirdly is that we, uh, again, each email is entirely unique. Fourth is that we only send like 50 emails per account. So we send like a very small amount. We actually create like 30 accounts for every 1,500 emails. Mm -hmm. um, and we manage everything. Wow. So, so emails reach the inbox and it, it's, it's amazing. But they can reach the inbox with, imagine you can send out 1,500 a day and get, uh, get them all reach the inbox or you can send 15,000 a day and they're all going to reach the inbox. So, Literally, it allows us to scale to whatever size we want.
it's amazing to see how you converted like um, ba back then when we talked mm -hmm. like you were completely different uh, in terms of business as well right and now like you're doing that and um, as, do, do you really enjoy all of this what, what got you to, to get into this industry I always w so first of all even when you met me our my team was doing cold calls if you remember yes we were doing cold calls to set up meetings yes I've always loved cold calling cold email like anything where you initiate it where you're not waiting for something to happen you create it mm -hmm. uh, that was always important for me because I always like to feel the control the part where you can say could create consistent results and control them um, now even somebody like Grant Cardone like the guy spends a million dollars a month on advertising but he has like a whole team that does cold calling and he says that's like 30% of their business growth um, so so I've always loved that and I've always loved the idea of leverage so I always I knew there's this huge thing called called the internet and I said look like at any point like in from now till now about a million people clicked on something yeah. right so I just knew if I just tap into it somehow then then it's gonna be amazing like you can get you know a lot of uh, impact money like it's gonna, it could be amazing but it always came from a bad place so because of what I told you about earlier of the meditation not feeling good so I tried things like like manipulating Facebook and I did that very well by the way uh, I tried things like what's called white hat marketing black hat marketing like but it always came from a bad place of like I'm, I'm lazy I don't want to work I want to have it automatic I want to just make money uh, but then when it changed from like a bad place to a really good place a holistic place of like I want to help people I want to do something really amazing suddenly also because we tried using the system like we tried abusing it and like just sending out like a lot of affiliate links and just trying to get automatic sales it didn't work it's almost like there's like a holistic thing going on mm -hmm. where you have to come from a really value giving place to make it work and suddenly when we just shifted the model and just said okay we're going to help business owners we're going to help our customers help their business owners uh, then everything changed and um, so so it works it works amazing and even Google likes us so that, that's the crazy thing like Google hates cold emailing they hate cold like they hate when people abuse their system but Google loves us because our emails they never get flagged the spam uh, they always reach the inbox people reply them uh, so so it's like even Google likes what we're doing because it comes from a value giving place so it doesn't hurt their systems it doesn't make people not like email so so I guess that's what really changed. I've always been interested in that, but now it's like, it comes from a really good place. So it's like you, uh, that, uh, you got your passion back into yourself and, and that's really good. I, I can see it from the way you talk, the, the way you're using your body right now. And, and it's good to see. So how, how is life right now <laughs> for you? Oh, it's very different. Uh, I have a partner, uh, he's the CEO of the company. So I'm only in charge of growth. I in charge of like closing sales, helping our customers, making everything grow. And he's the CEO, so he deals with everything that I'm bad at. You know, I'm bad at management, I'm bad at like dealing with uh, human problems, I'm bad at like uh, bureaucracy or, you know, and he does everything. So it's also me finding the right partner that I can, somebody that I can trust that always has my back that, you know, the things I'm bad at, he's very good at. So I'm feeling it gives me a lot of security and the ability to just focus on what I love doing. Uh, we're hiring a ton of people. Uh, so like every day, there's something new that's taken away from me that I don't do it anymore. Somebody else does it for me, um, so that's really awesome. And uh, because or else it would get boring. And um, and and life is really good. I mean, I've I've been in places like this where I've made a lot of money, but in this case, it's very different because uh, first of all, uh, we have a marketing system that we know we can make as much money as we want. So we literally have to stop marketing every month. To just in increase our infrastructure and make sure the business can handle more clients and every time we do that we get two and a half times more clients so we grow like we grow basically we grew uh in like a month and a half by three and a half times right now which it's it's unheard of yes. for like a new company um and we're going to keep doing that so we believe we're going to hit like a million dollars a month within like six months very easily uh it's all it literally is a, the best problem you can have in business is we have an infinite amount of demand and we literally just have to be able to take up all these customers. And that's really what we're aiming to do with all our customers as well. Um, and, and so it's very different, like the fact that you can like, uh, you know, you can spend money, you can, you know, I can get a taxi anytime I want, I can buy anything I want. Like it, it's very, 
it's a very cool reality. But the funny thing is, like, I always wanted to do it so I can buy a lot of things and, you know, travel and feel, like, really cool about it. But now that I actually do something that I love, um, and again, I'm not saying it works specifically because I love it. I'm just saying, like, now that I'm doing something that I really love and really enjoy and I'm really happy with myself, I can buy a lot of things, but I don't want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't need it. It's like, ah, it's a waste of time, you know? Like, why would I purchase it? Why would I? Yeah. So yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. But what's really cool is like my wife, for example. So we have a six-month-old. She's amazing. Like she, she basically deals with all the house stuff, uh, the family stuff. You know, today with feminism, it's like it's like she's uh, a bad woman because uh-huh. she's actually she's at home and at home and taking care, thing. and she's actually happy. Uh-huh. Like God forbid, she's actually enjoying it. Uh-huh. Uh, and and uh, it's very fun to be like you know, honey, like you can buy anything you want, pay as much money, you can get a babysitter, you can. You can get a cleaner, you can, you know, you want to fix the car, you want to buy a new thing, you want to buy furniture, like, pay as much money as you want, I don't mind. Uh, so that's a really fun feeling, to let your wife, like, yeah. to have a wife that you can trust, that's not like, you know, she met me when I was broke, like, she had to give me, like, like, like two dollars to get the bus to go home, because I didn't have any money at all. Um, and, and so it's, it's good to know that, and she's very financially responsible, so it's good to know that, like, that like you found somebody that you know is with you because they love you mm-hmm. because they they met you when you had nothing and and now she gets to like you know i get to like reward her for for you know for the potential that she saw in me when we met so so it's a really good feeling uh to be able to let your wife you know feel security feel uh, freedom to do whatever she wants it's, it's a very good feeling and how old are you right now uh 20 either 26 or 27 i'm, I'm not either. sure <laughs> i think 26 yeah. wow that's amazing man really i really lo- enjoy to to hear all of this because we didn't talk for a while mm-hmm. and i'm very happy for you sincerely like to see that you're growing and that you're in a good place uh, mind and heart uh, so where can people find you um well to be honest if they're not business owners then i prefer that they don't find me <laughs> Uh, but but because just because we are really focused right now on growing the company uh, but uh, I have a YouTube channel uh, Robbie Frank uh, I spent like three years growing it. it has like you know a few hundred videos of me I wrote a book about my life story from like age like 16 to 24 or something uh, so you can find that on my website or my YouTube channel it doesn't matter um, or again if you're a business owner you can search my company Primatica just search it on Google or You'll find it, you know, it won't be hard to find it. I would put links uh, somewhere. Yeah, so, so that's for like business owners. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for the time, man. Thanks, dude. If you enjoyed this interview or any other one from the Mind Body Podcast, feel free to subscribe to my podcast at iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and at my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share this podcast on Instagram by tagging the Mind Body Podcast. Do you want to be a part of the Mind Body podcast? So remember the fast factor. The fast factor stands for 1. Facebook. Become a part of the Mind Body podcast community by joining our Facebook community just by searching on Facebook the Mind Body podcast community. Number 2. Act. Don't just be a passive listener. Act upon what you've just learned by applying one simple thing from any episode or interview. 3. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, or if you're visual like me, then just search the Mind Body Podcast on YouTube. And number 4. Train others. Because just like I always say, leaders create leaders and you're all here to grow together and by training others you're training yourself so this is the fast factor remember it facebook act subscribe and train others oh and please feel free to leave a review which will engage all your vac senses and the vac senses stands for visual auditory and kinesthetic Which, when you use all the three combined, you remember stuff much better. For more information about my coaching, public speaking, and taking your mind and body to all new levels, check my site at lidodayan.com. Till then, never, ever forget to smile. See you soon.